Hello, welcome back. When we become infected with some pathogen, it damages our systems and we become ill. It becomes important then to identify the pathogen responsible for the illness. Almost all pathogens cause similar illness that includes fever, body aches, tiredness, nausea, pain abdomen and so on. It becomes difficult for the treating doctor to guess which one of the thousands of pathogens is actually responsible for the illness in a particular patient. There comes the role of a microbiologist who uses her knowledge to isolate and identify the causative pathogen in a human sample. Today, I'll discuss the process of sample collection and general processes followed in the microbiology lab to identify the causative pathogen. Proper sample collection is very important in order to achieve the desired results. For example, if the sample is contaminated during the collection process with the commensal bacteria, also called the harmless resident flora found on our skin, mouth, nose, urethra and GIT, the process of identification of pathogen becomes difficult as these commensal bacteria also grow alongside the pathogens and may outnumber them in the culture. The contamination of human samples is a common problem faced by the microbiologists. So it becomes important to have a good knowledge about proper sample collection techniques. I will discuss the details about proper sample collection techniques for different samples in some other video. The type of specimen that needs to be sent to the lab depends on the suspected pathogen. For example, we send sputum for a patient who is having cough, nasal and throat swabs for sore throat, blood culture for prolonged fever, urine for symptom like burning micturition, pus from an abscess and so on. Good knowledge about the type of sample that needs to be collected for a particular pathogen reduces the burden on the lab and also saves the money for the patient. Once collected, the sample must be transported to the lab without delay. Now, once we have received the samples in the lab, we process it using the five basic techniques. These five techniques are inoculation, incubation, isolation, inspection and identification. The first step is inoculation, where we place the sample into a container of sterile culture medium containing nutrients to sustain the growth of the pathogen. Inoculation involves spreading the sample on the surface of a solid medium or introducing the sample into a liquid medium in a tube or flask. Incubation is done after inoculation inside an electrical cabinet called incubator that can be set to a desired temperature where pathogens can grow easily. Depending on the generation time or dividing time, different bacteria produce a visible growth at different times varying from few hours or days for most bacteria to several weeks in case of tuberculosis bacteria. Once we see a visible growth in the culture medium, we proceed for isolation. The growth may take the form of separate colonies, that means discrete mounds of cells on solid media or turbidity produced by free floating cells inside the liquid media. We usually get a mixed growth on first culture from the human samples. Now we need to isolate the suspected colony of pathogen by subculturing one or more bacterial colonies into separate fresh culture media. This gives us pure growth in the next cycle of culture that contains only one pathogen. Once we have isolated pathogen in the pure culture, we go for inspection that is done first with the naked eyes for the texture, size, shape, pigment, speed of growth and patterns of growth produced on different culture media. Then we inspect the pathogen under microscope looking at the bacteria's shape, size, motility, capsule formation, sporulation, granules and uptake of color on gram staining and other stains. We can use various types of microscopes for identifying details of cell wall, flagella, pili and even fimbriae. Next step is identification. Based on the information gained by inspection, 
we narrow down the possible pathogens to a limited few. We go for physiological and biochemical tests for further identification of the pathogen. The presence or absence of specific enzymes in bacteria can cause fermentation of sugars with production of acid and gas and metabolism of various proteins. Presence of enzymes like catalase and oxidase is also tested to differentiate various pathogens. We also check the sensitivity of the pathogenic bacteria to various antimicrobial drugs using conventional methods like disc diffusion and dilution methods covered in my previous videos. The identification of pathogen to the species level can also be done using newer advanced methods like Malditoff and PCR based methods. Once the true pathogen is identified and antibiotic susceptibility testing is done, we convey the report to the treating physician. So this was all about sample processing in the microbiological lab. Hope you liked the video. Do comment in the comment section. Please like, share and subscribe the channel for more such videos.